Excited. And, and before we get going, guys, I, I just want to tell everybody thank you for, for watching the videos. We're just getting started here on the First and Long College Football Podcast. And, um, you know, we're looking to, to serve our viewers uh, the best that we can. So please leave us a comment, uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, we're we're going to be here multiple days a week and, and putting out lots of content throughout the college football season. And as of right now, we're, we're about uh, 40 days away. So it, time is a ticking and it will be here before you know it. Uh, and SEC Media Days is, is definitely the start of the season uh, for most people and coaches and, and players and fans alike. Ole Miss, um, I, I, I feel like they're – such a hard team to get your your head around. They brought so many guys in. Lane Kiffin said today that they've got 40 new scholarship players. Um, and, I mean, that, that type of thing is just unprecedented. So we're going to see, you know, if he can turn that into to wins on the field. And Ole Miss was such an interesting team to me last year. They started off 8-1 um, and one and then just – fell apart. And, and one of the things that Lane talked about today was that the, the team, uh, he let the team kind of fall apart. And, you know, I, I'm no coach. I'm no X's and O's guy. You know, I don't have any insider knowledge or anything. I'm just a college football fan, you know, but it, it seems to me that it, it, whenever you build these teams with nothing but transfers, I feel like there's more of a propensity for uh, these guys to kind of quit on you. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that they're all quitters or losers or something, because obviously that's not the case. There's there's obviously great kids that are transferring, but I'm, they did quit on their last team, right? And and it, it makes you wonder about these kids that are transferring two, three, four times, you know. It, it, it makes you wonder about their character a little bit, you know. And and, and um, But anyway, it, Lane uh, was, was – not super complimentary of the situation that, that everybody's been put in with the transfer portal. Uh, he compared it to NFL and NBA players just being able to play for a team for a couple months and decide that they don't want to be there anymore and, and they're gone. Um, you know, and, and whenever you put it into retrospect like that, I mean, how could you possibly manage something, you know, where, where there's that type of back and forth with, with, even if you're managing a business or something, employees, I mean, you could never, never get any kind of rhythm or build any kind of culture or anything like that. So um, I, I, it was interesting what Lane had to say. And uh, I feel like Lane is, uses his platform um, to try and uh, bring issues to light that, that a lot of people, you know, a lot of people just don't even think about or would, or what, you know, as they would say, casuals would just wouldn't even understand. Um, so Lane did a lot of complaining, I guess you could say, uh, but was it rightful? Yeah, I, I do think it was rightful. Um, but uh, with this old Miss team, uh, you know, they brought in a, a transfer quarterback, Spencer uh, Sanders. Um, they brought in a, a transfer wide receiver. Uh, they brought in just tons of transfers on the defense. So, and they bring in Pete Golden to run the defense. What, what's your outlook on them this year? How do you feel about Ole Miss this year and, and where they're headed? Yeah, I'm actually really high on Ole Miss. Um, I, I think that, that this – I mean, you're right. You know, you brought up the fact that they, they brought in over 40 um, or 40 or more transfers and um, – you know, just with the quarterbacks alone, they bring in not only Spencer Sanders, but Walker Howard from LSU as transfers um, yeah. to three couple with their to couple with their starter, Jackson Dart. So you've got a three quarterback competition. And I haven't heard much, uh, to be honest, coming out of um, Oxford, Mississippi, um, as far as how that quarterback competition is shaping up. I don't know much about it, but. Um, I tell you, they have two of easily the top 10 running backs in the SEC. Number one in my book, Quinshawn Judkins. Um, it, he's the number one SEC uh, running back right now in my book and, and is a, a true Heisman contender. Um, but also Ulysses Bentley, the fourth. 
Um, this is a guy who, uh, if you're into FPS, you, you know, this was a guy that you could, you could catch, uh, at a low rate at a low price and get a lot out of him. Uh, he was, he was a producer, he's a power back and, um, he's, he's the thunder to Quinshawn Judkins lightning. And, uh, they are a, a, a dynamic one, two punch. Um, also bringing in, I'm just looking at their depth chart here. They, they got a, a red shirt junior transfer, Trey Harris, who will be their starting X and a senior transfer in Zachary Franklin, uh, who will be their Z and also a tight end transfer who th these are all starters for them. So you've got three starters coming in as transfers. Um, and then on the defensive side of the ball without, you know, naming all of them, uh, you've also got four, four starters coming in. So, uh, that's a lot for, for, for most championship contending teams. If you bring in two starters out of 22, um, out of the transfer portal, that's a, that's a big, that's a big shakeup, you know, and, and for Lane, um, gosh, uh, he's, he's got seven right here uh easily and that's not including if spencer sanders ends, ends up starting over jackson dart so or walker howard uh for that matter but but i think that this is you know you know and, and you mentioned um you mentioned lane in his press conference he was talking about how last season he didn't keep the team motivated well enough after the loss to alabama Right. That's that's the point that he pointed to and said, that's where I could have gotten better. I could have been more of a motivator like we know Kirby and Nick Saban are doing. Right. These guys are are real, you know, motivators more than uh, more than most coaches. And I think that's a big part of their success. So I think he looked at that and reflected on that a little bit and said, you know, maybe I let my team down. Right. And, and for him in his fourth season with Ole Miss to to be, you know, still still able to grow. Um, excuse me. I saw in that I saw in that press conference with Lane that he did a lot of reflecting. And I think that that's going to bode well for for his rebels um, and, you know, for him in the future. So I'm anxious to see them. I, I, I really do think that they're kind of a, a sleeper team. I have them as um, I guess I have them at four in the sec west i have them finishing fourth um behind lsu alabama and texas a&m this season so um pretty that's kind of right where they were last season i guess but i think that texas a&m finally gets the bump but uh that, that's not to say that i think that they're they're not a, a great team I, I i really do think that they're um going to be a pretty strong team and um, just one of those teams that, that goes through the gauntlet of the SEC West and, you know, it obviously uh, doesn't do any, doesn't do them any favors, right, for their schedule. So um, I was, uh, I was really, you know, going back to the press conference, I was, uh, I was expecting fireworks with Lane Kiffin. I think, I think we got those fireworks um, and it was really interesting to, to watch him uh, talk about free agency in college football um, you know, and, and, and being Lane, you know, I don't know if you, if you saw, but he, he called out, uh, Paul Feinbaum and told him to stop pissing, pissing, saving off. Cause it doesn't make it any easier for the rest of them in the <laughs> SEC. <laughs> so yeah, that was awesome. pretty funny. That was pretty funny. And they get, they got into a little bit of a, a back and forth, you know, and, um, Paul Feinbaum didn't like that for some reason. He got a little chippy about it. So it was, it was yeah. kind of funny to watch, but uh, it was all in good fun at, at the end of the day. Um, yeah. And then also uh, there was another reporter I saw today on Twitter who uh, I think it was like his last question in, in sort of the, so, so, so in these, in these SEC media days, uh, the coaches come out and they, you know, stand at their podium, they do their 10 minute, um, you know, opening remarks and they open up for questions and then after that, they go into a back room and more reporters follow the man and they sit down and they go into more questions. Well, at the end of that second session, a reporter <laughs> said something about how he gets mistaken for Lane Kiffin all the time, you know, and he asked Lane Kiffin, he's like, do we, do you think we look alike? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny uh, just That's hearing funny. Lane's, you know, reaction, you know, and he's like, man, I, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, that you get you get confused for me, but, uh, you know, I, 
it, it, it was it was it was pretty funny to watch but um just to see that reaction and to see lane being lane and, yeah. and cutting up before the season starts um but what about uh it, what did you first of all did you have any other remarks for old miss and if not what what were your takes for uh tennessee and josh heupel yeah absolutely yeah um as far as old miss goes uh I, my questions are not on the offense this year. I, I think the offense is going to be very good. Quinshawn Judkins, Judkins is – I definitely think he's the best running back in the SEC, um, probably top five in the game right now, well, right there with Rocket Sanders. They, they had com comparable numbers last year, honestly. Um, and this was one of the best rushing teams in all of football last year, and um, it, it looks to me from everything that I've read and I've heard about – that Jackson Dorr is going to be the guy. He had the best spring game. and uh, But, you know, they've just got some big losses, man. You know, at wide receiver, they lose Mingo and Heath. Uh, at tight end, they lose Michael Trigg. Uh, at cornerback, they lost Davidson. Uh, I, this guy's name is hard for me. It's Ig, Igben, Igbonason. Um, he left to Ohio State. Miles Battle to Utah. Uh, Tysheen Johnson to Oregon, um, you know, it, it's just a ton of losses. Now, this defense was not good anyway, so to lose those cornerbacks, is that a big deal? Probably not. It, it's probably not that big a deal, I guess, but if you want this defense to be better, then then you want guys to come back, right? I mean, you would think naturally guys would, would progress if they stay in the system another year, um, even though they do get a new defensive coordinator, but all three of those guys in the in the secondary were going to start or, or or play significant time uh, at, at the very least. So I, I don't know if they hit the portal just right for the secondary. Uh, we've talked about these SEC teams. There's there's a few sec Alabama and Georgia have great secondaries, and then I haven't seen another great one since we've been reviewing these teams. But then again, there's not a ton of great quarterbacks in the SEC this year, right? So in theory. Maybe it's a decent year for that uh, for that type of situation, and, and maybe they can they can make lemonade out of lemons there that at Old Miss.